pavements are designed and made right here in New Zealand to endure our unique climate and harsh environment. Quality paints that last. Resine. It's all over New Zealand. Kayaku nui, kayaku rahi, tēnā koutou katoa. I wish you all a warm welcome to the presentation of the 2020 Wellington Architecture Awards, proudly brought to you by Te Kahui Whaihanga, New Zealand Institute of Architects. This is the fifth in this year's series of local architecture awards that celebrate the best architecture in the regions covered by the Institute of Architects' eight branches. Normally, these awards are announced at events attended by architects, clients, builders and consultants, all the people who make architecture happen. But, of course, this is not a normal year and we're all having to do things differently. But as the Whakatauki has it, ka mate kainga tahi, ka ora kainga rua. When one house fails, build another. Although the format of tonight's event is different, its purpose remains the same to recognise the achievements of architects and their clients, promote awareness of New Zealand's architecture, and acknowledge the difference good design can make in our communities. One person who has spent a career making a difference is the president of Te Kahui Whaihanga, New Zealand Institute of Architects, Judy Keith-Brown. Before we turn to the Wellington Architecture Awards, Judy has a brief message about the awards, the institute, and some of the current architectural issues in Aotearoa. Tēnā koutou katoa. Te Kahui Whaihanga NZIA Local Awards are all about celebrating the best architecture of the past year. They are also an opportunity to reflect on the past 12 months, especially the last four, and to look to the future. This has seen our local awards presentations moved into the virtual space, which offers a new opportunity to tell our story to all the people out there watching for the first time. What story will that be? I think one of fresh ideas and hope. Our profession needs to address perceptions of architects as being expensive, remote and unaffordable. We have much to offer and by working closely with our clients, our problem solving skills and understanding of working together will help New Zealand create a more prosperous, resilient and sustainable Aotearoa. As architects, we care deeply about our clients and communities and are passionate about our cities, towns and open spaces. We know what it takes to make homes healthy, efficient and comfortable to live in, designed to make the most impressive difference to clients' lives. When our sons were little, the Lorax by Dr. Zeus was a big favourite. Many of you will know this line from that book. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So now is our chance. Thank you to everyone who entered the awards this year and to the jury for their time and expertise. And to all the winners, Congratulations to your clients and project teams. Finally, thank you Rosine, our partner in these awards for 30 years, a New Zealand company supporting New Zealand architecture. In this very unusual year, the Wellington Architecture Awards jury made its visits virtually via online presentations by the architects of shortlisted projects. The Institute of Architects thanks the architects and the jury for their tolerance of this novel judging process. The Wellington Architecture Awards jury was led by convener Shauna Herminghouse and included fellow Wellington architects Shani Nelson and Michael O'Brien, Auckland architect Gerard Hall and landscape and urban designer Robin Simpson. The jury considered 65 awards entries from Wellington, Wairarapa and the Kapiti Coast. Shauna Herminghouse reports that small projects and individual houses made up a sizeable number of the entries, along with significant commercial and heritage projects in the Wellington CBD and education projects on the city fringe. Shauna says the stories behind many of the projects were inspiring. For some clients, sustainability was a deep concern. 
In other cases, a project marked a significant change in a client's life or was a means to improving an individual's or a community's quality of life. The jury was delighted, Shauna says, by the expertise and craft brought to the smallest of projects. It was good to see a number of modest projects built at the rear of sections or on seemingly unbuildable sites, proving the value that architects can bring no matter the size or site of the budget. While we are celebrating the winners tonight, we want to acknowledge all of those projects that were entered into the 2020 Wellington Architecture Awards this year, and especially the projects that were shortlisted by the judges. Here are some of those shortlisted projects. Now for the winners of the 2020 Wellington Architecture Awards, which will be announced by category. The first awards announced are in the category of commercial architecture. The winners are Antipodes Skincare Heritage Refurbishment by Architecture Workshop. The Antipodes building achieves a delicate balance of gentle touch and industrial aesthetic. The extensive refurbishment of a 1930s building superbly demonstrates how architecture can express, externally and internally, an organisation's brand and ethos, and can integrate this work with a significant seismic upgrade. Site 10, Kumutoto, by Athfield Architects. This fully base-isolated building demonstrates the sensitivity required to design and deliver a contemporary building on such a significant waterfront site. The building responds to its context with a design generated from its rich natural and human history and provides a protective colonnade on a main arterial route and a gateway to the harbour. Bowen State Building by Warren and Marnie Architects this significant upgrade of the Bowen State Building rejuvenates and extends a significant modernist building. The architects have respected the muscular form of the original building and bronze facade detailing gives a nod to the adjacent beehive. The rehabilitation of the brutalist building into a modern government workplace is a fine example of sustainability in action. 
There is one winner in the education category. The award goes to Thorndon School by Mackenzie Hyam Architects. Thorndon School skillfully gleans every bit of space from an irregular and tight urban site. The architecture helps create and express a sense of community and the successful engagement with mana whenua and the prioritisation of the children's experiences is evident in the sophisticated exterior and playful interior. The awards in the category of heritage are Antipodes Skincare Heritage Refurbishment by Architecture Workshop, a beautiful restoration of a heritage 1930s facade and internal entry stair and the reactivation of the building as the base for New Zealand company Antipodes has revived this building's graciousness. The refurbishment overlays new materials, textures and themes with sensitivity while accommodating a modern commercial environment. Harbour City Centre Annex by Harriet Mellowish O'Neill Architects. Extending through the full width of a city block, the upgraded Harbour City Centre Annex represents two meticulously restored facades to Wellington CBD. This is a transformative upgrade, both preserving and modernising a heritage building and thereby extending its life well into the future. There is one award for hospitality. The winner is The Marion by Foster and Melville Architects. An inspirational client and a responsive architect came together to realise this vibrant urban hostel designed to create opportunities for social interaction amongst its occupants. The upgraded existing commercial building and adjoining residents exude character inside and out and stand out from the eclectic mix of buildings on the street. The Marion is also the recipient of the Resine Colour Award. The housing category winners are Riverside Batch by AKA Architecture. This simple, unadorned, but skillfully composed batch was designed and built to test a seven meter by seven meter prototype for future use as infill and affordable housing. Scale and detail are key to this beautiful timber clad batch that uses small dwelling tactics to achieve comfort and flexibility within a skillfully composed and detailed envelope. Paitawa Beach House by Andrew Sexton Architecture. This house's beauty comes through its craft and the contrast of a rugged timber and concrete exterior with refined interior details and finishes. Thanks to the house's high level glazing, the roof seems to float over interior walls and joinery. In a delightful change from typical beach house interiors, dark materials provide a restful sanctuary from the sun. Robinson Crimp House by Architecture Robinson Crimp. What started as a shared renovation evolved into a new house which is the result of extensive research into materials and a mastery of construction techniques and engineering. The owner architects led a collaborative team, including builders and the local council, in an exploratory and educational process. The house successfully reimagines what a low-cost, low-energy dwelling can be. Waikanae House 2 by Harriet Mellowish O'Neill Architects. This house, clad in a linear cedar and macrocarpa screens, opens up to the sun and views on the hills of the Kapiti coast. The architects guided the clients through a staged build of the house, which incorporates passive solar design, shading and natural ventilation. The continuation of timber panelling through the interior of the house maintains the casual feel of the exterior. Vera Street House by Parsonson Architects. This house on a subdivided section certainly doesn't shrink away at the rear of the site. Corrugated iron elements and subtle references to the client's love of tramping, art and the outdoors give a tailored character to the house. The modest dwelling is a delightful living environment for the owner, inside and out. 10 by 10 House by Patchwork Architecture. This adventurous building is evidence that cleverly designed and built houses can occupy steep Wellington sites. Rigorously planned, bold and unapologetic, the house features usable external spaces with decks and terraces and an expansive roof terrace with a playful bus stop viewing shelter makes the climb up worthwhile. Hotbox by Patchwork Architecture. 
This house, realised in close partnership with the client, is a great study in sustainability going hand in hand with buildability and design quality, all on a tight budget. The design maximises passive solar design performance and is tailored to construction techniques governed by the difficult site access and self-build approach. The following are awards for housing, alterations and additions. 802 Park and Apartment by Foster and Melville Architects. Inhabiting this small but luxurious apartment is like being inside a mirrored jewellery box. Surprises are revealed everywhere you look. A high level of craftsmanship and designability and good material selections create a world of variety on a 55 square metre footprint. A sense of glamorous largesse allows the apartment to transcend its spatial limitations and provide a characterful living environment. Carbonic Ice Apartment by John Mills Architects. A former fishing company warehouse has been transformed into a flexible series of spaces that accommodate both intimate living and larger entertaining areas. The patina of the original walls is retained in the outside courtyards, while interiors are shaped within the frame of the warehouse. Unexpected tranquility is created within the transformed shell of the industrial building. Thorndon Villa Light Catcher Alteration by Lovell and O'Connell Architects. This carefully crafted small extension to an 1870s heritage villa transforms the existing house well beyond its small footprint. Far from the traditional lean-to add-on, the extension takes advantage of every opportunity to admit light, facilitate cooking as a sociable pastime, and provide comfort and a connection to the rear garden. Mount Victoria House Alterations by Mary Dash Architect. This transformation through alteration of a heritage villa is the result of a detailed examination of spaces and a sensitive understanding of the client's way of living. Through rearranging the function and flow of rooms, the careful design edits out what didn't work, strategically adds modern joinery, and draws in light to rejuvenate a house which should have a comfortable and enduring future. Mount Victoria House Alteration is also the recipient of a Resine Colour Award. The awards for housing multi-unit are Adelaide Road Townhouses by Architecture Plus. This multi-unit project establishes a link to New Zealand's domestic architecture traditions. The townhouses maintain a relationship to the local character of the streetscape through their scale and form, with a simple gable and clear identity. Excellent site planning balances and delineates public and private domains down the length of the site, providing outlooks for everyone and individual units have received careful attention. Adelaide Road Townhouses is also the recipient of a Resine Colour Award. Paitutu by Colab Architecture. A long history led to the recent opportunity for an iwi development company community housing development on the historic site of Paitutu Kainga. Successful site planning balances the public realm with the private facilities for each townhouse. Cultural placemaking is integrated into the design. The path through the community of the two and three-storey dwellings to the river's edge is lined with artworks that tell the story of Rona and Te Marama. The interior architecture winners tonight are Formway Design Studio by Andrew Sexton Architecture and Harris Architects in Association. A steel portal inserted into a restored historical facade opens into a lengthy open meeting and office space and a timber and glazed wall runs along the length of the space, separating front and back of house spaces. A simple palette of materials and concepts doesn't compete with the heritage space and modern products created within the studio, rather it enhances and beautifully organises them. Greenwood Roche by Custance Associates Breaking down the traditional front and back of house separation at law firms, this workplace uses highly crafted design to open up the entire workplace to clients. Hierarchies are broken down through a design approach that privileges transparency and encourages circulation throughout the office. An elegant palette of materials, including custom acoustic ceiling panels, creates a unified layering of elements from the front door through to the back office amenities. FNZ Office Fit-Out by Harriet Mellowish O'Neill Architects. 
Taking full advantage of the extensive upgrade of a heritage building, this fit-out is all about the light, which spills down through the central atrium and comes in from the sides to fill the deep floor space and high floor volumes. A subtle palette and patterning complement the modernisation of the building. Forsyth Bar Workplace by Warren and Money Architects This elegant fit-out serves to indicate how much the law company values its clients and wants to impress them. Visitor hosting spaces flow outward from the entry, occupying the full width of the harbour front view, and slick finishes and fine detail draws visitors into the space and adjoining private meeting rooms. Public architecture features one winner, Waitohi, Johnsonville Library and Community Hub by Athfield Architects. Waitohi sets a benchmark for this growing community, creating a visible and welcoming presence that ties together existing facilities. Containing a library, kindergarten, cafe and community meeting rooms, Waitohi has a grand civic scale. The building, with its historical references to the site and former forest, is conceptually strong and provides a civic heart for this growing town centre. The final awards are in the category of small project architecture. First Light Tiny Home by First Light Studio. Inhabiting this house is like living in one interconnected, interlocking piece of joinery. The design is simplified down to just two materials, creating a clean, organised space that is a refreshingly well-designed alternative to the rustic aesthetic of the typical tiny home. The design is uncluttered, generous and well-articulated. The house is a great example of resolving design down to the last millimetre. Herald Street Garden Studio by Parsonson Architects this delightful gem of a studio introduces a contemporary design language to the tradition of the sleep-out studio down the back of the section. This is livable, approachable and attainable high-quality design, a brilliant example of the relevance of architecture to everyday living on tight urban sites. Lastly, there is one Enduring Architecture Award to announce this evening. Enduring Architecture Awards are given to buildings that are at least 25 years old, and which continue to function as high quality works of architecture. The award goes to Jellicoe Towers by Alan Wilde, architect. The modernist simplicity of this one apartment per floor tower on the terrace in Wellington has stood the test of time. To enter the tower by the glazed bridge is to appreciate the feat of building such a structure on such a steep site. Its recent upgrade should allow this landmark building to stand sentinel for a long time on the hill above Wellington, where it is an outstanding feature of the city's skyline. Congratulations to all those involved in projects that received Wellington Architecture Awards. All winners will be acknowledged on the NZIA website and social media accounts and will be published through media outlets from tomorrow. If you are a winner, you will receive your certificate in the next few days. Please note that all award-winning projects will go forward for consideration in the 2020 New Zealand Architecture Awards, which will be adjudged and announced at the end of this year. Thank you again to the Wellington Architecture Awards jury convened by Shauna Herminghouse. Thank you to the sponsor of the awards program, Resine Paints. And finally, thank you, wherever you are, for joining me in the celebration of the year's best architecture in the Wellington branch of Te Kahui Whaihanga New Zealand Institute of Architects. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, a tēnā ratātou, katoa.